Hello and welcome to the Oatana Today Show, your community connection since 1991. Thanks so much for joining us on this Monday, March 6th of 2017. My name is Pete Connor. I'm your host for the program. And as usual, we have a great slate of guests for the show. Today we will have Sherry Crage, who is from Blooming Prairie and who has been named the Oatana Businesswoman Woman of, the, of Achievement for 2017. And we're going to talk with Sherry about that. And then from also south of, <laughs> originally south uh, Steele County, Sister Fran John Perkle, who is the retiring chaplain of Homestead Hospice House. And we'll have both of those ladies here in just a bit. As a reminder, we'd appreciate your input about what you'd like to see on the program for show topics and guests. If you know of someone who has done something special that needs recognition, or if you have an event that should be publicized, you know, please let us know at Owatonna Today uh, at charter.net or by calling the show's pr uh, producer, Leanne Alt, at 390 5751. And now we're going to take a quick break for some messages from our sponsors and be right back with Sherry and Sister Franchon. Stay with us. Hi, I'm Jody Voison with the staff at Fairview Animal Medical Center, your other family doctor. Fairview Animal Medical Center is a proud supporter of the Oatana Today Show. If clothing catches fire, stop, drop, and roll. If your clothes catch on fire, do not panic and run. This only fans the fire. Stop where you are, drop to the ground, and roll over and over to smother the flames. Cover your face with your hands to protect your eyes and your throat and lungs from the burns. This has been a safety tip from the Oatana Fire Department. Hi, I'm Betsy Linger from the Oatana Foundation. Your generosity has made Oatana a better place to live by benefiting our community, the arts, recreation, and education. Please consider a donation today. The Owatonna Foundation is a proud sponsor of the Owatonna Today Show. This March, as part of Minnesota Food Share Month, the Steel County Food Shelf hopes to raise $100,000 in cash or pounds of food. Minnesota Food Share contributes additional money based on our local donations. In 2016, 1,180 individuals living in Steel County registered at the food shelf. By the end of 2016, we had given out nearly 600,000 pounds of food. With your support, we are able to provide a monthly 10-day package of groceries to your neighbors in need. No no one in Steel County should have to go to bed hungry. Thank you for your generous support of the Steel County Food Shelf. Well, welcome back to the Oatana Today Show, your community connection, and welcome Sherry Crage Thank to the you. show. Thank you. And congratulations. Thank you again. A wonderful, wonderful award that you received from the Oatana Business Women's as the Women, Woman of Achievement for this year. Yeah, I was very surprised. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good thing, I guess, you know. But, yes. Uh, obviously, um, you deserve the award according to the group, you know, and to the selection committee. And it has to be based on things, right? Yes. I mean, it has to yes. be based on things. Let's find out a little bit about your, about your background. You know, you're currently in Blooming Prairie, although yep. you found out that you're an Ellendale girl. Yep, <laughs> yep, born and raised in Ellendale. Yeah, and uh, came over to... Better Blooming Prairie. My husband always <laughs> says he saved me from Ellendale, which is not true because Ellendale is a very nice very town. Very nice town, yes. exactly, sure. And, um, and so you have been uh, there now for a, a number of years. Yep, right? uh, we will be celebrating our 34th wedding anniversary here in May, so yeah. been there for quite a while. Right. Awards like the Woman of Achievement Award does not come based upon just you know being a nice person. You've been active in blooming. Tell us about some of the things that you've been doing. Um, well, when I guess when my kids were little, I was uh, I was a 4-H leader. Mm -hmm. I was a uh, Girl Scout leader, cookie mom, mm -hmm. town cookie mom. <laughs> um, and then when my kids got older, um, I was active in the after prom. I was mm -hmm. on the, uh, the after, com after prom committee, sure. um, started the Blooming Prairie Quarterback Club. Mm -hmm. Um, just like to be busy and yeah. like to help when I can. Yeah, sweet. And, and um, you, you've been an award winner <laughs> in your past. Yes. Tell us about some of those things that um, have occurred. Well, in, uh, I was chosen as the um, 
Blooming Prairie Chambers Citizen of the Year mm -hmm. in 2007, I believe. And then in um, 2014, I was uh, given the Awesome Advocator Award mm -hmm. from the Blooming Prairie Boys and Girls Club. And then in, it was uh, May of Mother's Day of 2013, I was chosen as the honorary Batgirl for the Minnesota Twins. And um, throughout the first pitch, wow. that's a cancer <laughs> awareness day uh. um, for breast cancer, and I am a breast cancer survivor. Mm -hmm. So my uh, sister nominated me for that award. So I was the, uh, I was the honorary Batgirl. And Luckily, I got it across home plate with the help of my son, who was a pitcher. Yeah, and, and what he had to do was to, to, to make sure that you didn't throw like a girl. That's exactly right. right. He's throw like, Mom, do hard, not throw right, like a girl. Right across the plate. Yeah, Mom. so we were, we were in the parking lot at the, up at the uh, Target field practicing, <laughs> so I wouldn't look foolish. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. I bet you got a nice round of applause from the, uh, the crowd that was there. I did. Yeah. I did, and it was really nice. My family was... Um, they were all there, mm -hmm. and uh, some other Blooming Prairie friends that knew that I was going to be sure. there, and it was yeah. very cool. Yeah, yeah. Very cool day. So I s assume that given your profile of being an activist in Blooming, um, you know, to be, to be recognized in this way as the woman of achievement, really, you know, it just follows, kind of follows suit, doesn't it? Well, I guess it does. I was just, I, I look at the other ladies that mm -hmm. were up for it, and there was mm -hmm. some wonderful ladies and had, I mean, just wonderful backgrounds and, you know, when you read uh, what they do and what they've done yeah. and then for them to pick me, I was sure, shocked. Sure, sure. <laughs> if, if you, when you do go back, you know, to look at your, your history, you know, and kind of do a replay, what would you say would be uh, maybe the top two things that you're really mo most proud of? Um, I'm, I'm very active in the Blooming Prairie Cancer Group, mm -hmm. and uh, I guess I would say that would be um, my biggest thing. Um, both my parents have died of cancer, mm -hmm. and I've had high school friends pass away from cancer, mm -hmm. just a lot of it. And then mm -hmm. after my mom passed away, then I also got cancer. Mm -hmm. And so that's just kind of my, that's my thing. Your passion. Um, yep. Yeah. And I, uh, we've grown our cancer group. Um, from when it started um, 17 years ago mm. by a, an older lady that just thought Blooming Prairie needs to do something about cancer. Sure. And uh, she did a great job, and uh, we've just made it grow from there. Um, a lot of our money goes to the um, Eagles Cancer Telethon okay. in Rochester for right. cancer research. Yes. And uh, also to the Hormel Institute, we give mm. money directly to them. Mm. But we also started about... I think it's five or six years ago, a community fund, mm. which just, we keep money separate that just helps people in our community that are, are dealing with cancer mm. issues, um, gas cards uh -huh. to get to treatments, uh -huh. um, parking passes in Rochester. We've given, um, we've paid electric bills for people at their homes, um, gas bills. Wow. Um, we built a, a ramp for a lady that um, needed a wheelchair mm. at her home. Um, just anything we can do to help. And then, so we do that. And then about three years ago, we started something called the Cancer Cab. Mm -hmm. And that is a group of volunteers that take people to appointments. Mm -hmm. So if somebody has cancer and needs to go to radiation in Albert Lee every day, I, we have a group volunteer that is mm -hmm. the leader and she has about 15 volunteers that um, she can call and we can send people, get people to their appointments. So that's really that's huge oh, for utterly us. Utterly important. Yes, you know? it is. You know what? I, the word that comes that comes to my mind is legacy. You're building a legacy. You know. Yeah, I and, guess you're right. And and how? You know, not that you do that. I mean, it's not again. You right. Didn't, you didn't do all of this stuff to be named the woman of achievement. No, absolutely but, but not. It, but it, it, it is it, in terms of recognition. That that's really what you're doing. Is you're you're building something. That has depth and, and breadth and that will live on. Right. You know, in yep. blooming for years to come, years I hope. We come. have a great uh, group of mm -hmm. volunteers and everyone is volunteers. Nobody gets paid for anything. Mm -hmm. um, we just all do it because probably every one of us, I know every one of us, has a connection sure. with cancer. And uh, our group was 15 and we just added five people this past year because 
we, we do something almost every month mm -hmm. as fundraising, fun things, just mm -hmm. different things. Um, mm -hmm. And so we have a really great group of volunteers in our, mm -hmm. in our cancer group. I wonder if that doesn't you know, just kind of normally evolve in a smaller community, all right? You know, that people just really <laughs> pull together. Pull together. Yeah. Blooming Prairie is a awesome community mm -hmm. and, and the surrounding communities. Uh, they all, in September we have our uh, live auction mm -hmm. and it's two nights in September. It's always the weekend after Labor Day mm -hmm. and we have over a hundred items each night under a big top tent that we auction off and that's our biggest fundraiser of the okay. year. And people come out of the woodwork to help us, yeah. um, whether they donate, whether they come and bid and buy things. Um, we just, Steel County is awesome yeah. and they are awesome to the Blooming Prairie Cancer Group. And, you know, I think, too, it's wonderful that um, the women of uh, the business women um, include, you know, uh, Blooming, uh, likely Ellendale and, you know, other, you know, right. surrounding area of, 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 of have people considered for the award. Yes, I was very, yeah, it is very nice. And I was very surprised. Um, I was nominated by Lauren Hart. Oh from KRFO sure. Radio, and um, I was I was just so surprised when they called me and told me that I was one of those. Yeah. I didn't realize that they went outside of Owatonna, and yeah. that is very, very nice. You didn't have a prepared, you did not have prepared remarks like they do at the Academy Awards. I definitely did not. Right. And what did your daughter tell you? you my <laughs> <laughs> well, before that, my, my brother said, do you have a speech prepared? And I'm like, seriously, I am sure. I don't need to worry about it. <laughs> and so I got up there, and I think I made a fool of myself because I did had zero to say. <laughs> and then my daughter, I came back to the table, and my daughter says, Mom you totally sucked at that speech. <laughs> and I'm like, I had nothing to say. <laughs> I was just speechless. Yeah, yeah. I just, I was. <laughs> oh. I'm very, very, I'm very humbled because the yeah. other ladies that were up for it are very, very, also very deserving of sure, the award. Sure, and We've got just a little bit of time left, but uh, privately, you're, you're part of the, of the family business, Page yes. Ford. And you're the admin person. You're the one who kind of holds it all together there, probably, yep. too, yep. right? That's, yep, that's right. Yeah. yeah. And that business has been around for a long time. Yes, we actually have been in business for 27 years. And we um, actually have been awarded the President's Award from mm -hmm. Ford Motor Company. And it's based on customer mm -hmm. satisfaction for 15 different years years. Something. Yes, so that's, that's something for us to be proud of that's at work also. You know, it, it, it takes that. We need to have that private enterprise business in order to make all the rest of it go. Right, that's small that small business yeah. at work. Very good. Sherry, it's been wonderful to have you here on the show and again congratulations on your award. Uh, best wishes and um, and sometime we might have you back to talk about other things. Sounds so good. Best wishes to Thank you. Thank you very much. And thanks to you for staying with us. And we're now going to take a break for some pre-recorded sponsor messages. Welcome to Bremer Bank. I am Jason Iberg. And I am Shannon Pedersen. Bremer is a full financial services bank. We invite you to stop by Bremer Bank and experience the Bremer difference. You, you are, are always, always welcome, welcome at Bremer. Bremer. I didn't just want another job, I wanted a career, so I expressed myself. I was new to town and I didn't know where to turn for a job, so I decided to express myself. I decided to express myself and they helped find the right career for me. Express Employment Professionals is in contact with thousands of companies in need of quality employees. Come in now and get the job you deserve. Since 1988, the Owatonna Area Business Development Center has been the part of the success of many area businesses. The center leases office space and manufacturing space and offers on-site business consulting. The Owatonna Area Business Development Center is in business to help your business be a success. Hi, I'm Tim Anderson, the owner of Anytime Fitness, where we make getting healthy, affordable, and convenient. Anytime Fitness is a proud sponsor of the Owatonna Today Show. I'm Dan Branstead of Carlson Branstead & Company, Certified Public Accountants. We support the Owatonna Today Show. Well, welcome back to the Owatonna Today Show, your community connection. Uh, I'm now very pleased to have uh, with me uh, 
Sister Franchon Perkle, who is the recently retired chaplain of uh, Homestead Hospice House. And Sister Franchon, yes. welcome. <laughs> Thank you, Pete. Thank <laughs> so you. nice to have you. It's, it's, it's uh, just wonderful to have you know, Sherry before you and, oh, and uh, now to have you here to, to talk about uh, uh, Gee, you know, we what could spend an, a lot of time. What an incredibly courageous and beautiful woman yeah. Sherry is. Yeah. Oh, I was so pleased to, to hear this interview. Good, excellent. Well, I'm, I'm happy to, that you're here to, to tell us about some of the things that we can, some bullet points about your long career, you know, certainly as a Franciscan, you know, you're a a Franciscan of uh, Rochester fame, right? right? Um, and have been, I, I don't know, maybe you've, you've traveled the world, you know, Franciscans get around, I know that. <laughs> I have to ask you this, were you a habited nun? At I was the habited, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose when that, yes, yeah. and, and when that finally went, I thought that was probably a relief that you didn't have to. Well. Uh, there were the change was yeah. uh, was different for us, but we loved the habit. Uh, mm -hmm. I loved it, and sure. uh, but I think that um, by changing the habit for many people that we served in ministry, mm -hmm. that uh, probably we were um, it was easier to get to know them mm -hmm. in in a relational way. Yeah. And but because I, you, obviously you, you live away from the convent. So you're you're involved in community work, yeah, uh, you know, right. such as we, the. We have a uh, saying though in our community: wherever one of us is, all of us are. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. we have sisters, you know, really, uh, because we're uh, a smaller number now in community. Mm -hmm. But uh, we, at one time, we were in almost all of the fifty states mm -hmm. and several international countries, and now that's changed somewhat, but. We're still out there. Out there doing yeah. your stuff, yeah. So, you, you know, community service, uh, such as the hospice house is, is currently, or, you know, just recently, you know, was part, how long? How long were you the chaplain? 51 years. Oh. Wow, 51 years. <laughs> well, really, no. I was a um, certified uh, home health aide okay. for two years mm -hmm. when Marlene Breckner was the oh, director. Sure. Yeah. And then I became chaplain. And okay. But a sister? Yes. Of, for 51? Uh, 60 years. 60? Mm -hmm. Holy moly. Mm -hmm. It's a long time. <laughs> it, yeah, is. it is. Yeah, it's a career. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell the story about my first grader. Yeah. Um, just a darling kid, and he was very, very serious about this because I think he thought that <clears throat> anyone older than a first grader was ancient. <laughs> so one day he said to me, uh, Sister, when you were a little girl, did your daddy wear a tin suit? Because <laughs> he, he thought, he, yes, he had an image yeah. and thought I went back to the cave ages. Oh, yeah. my, oh, my. So what sorts of things did you do, you know, in your <clears throat> time? You know, as, for, as a sister? As a sister. Okay, I started out in education. I taught uh, at well three in three states, mm -hmm. and uh, then I went into parish ministry in Austin, mm -hmm. and then into campus ministry at the College of Saint Teresa mm -hmm. in Winona, mm -hmm. and uh, was also there. Well, I was there for thirteen years in campus ministry and in student affairs, mm -hmm. and then I had a little run at leadership with the community. Mm -hmm. And uh, then I had to try to figure out what I was going to do when I grew up. So mm -hmm. I took classes for becoming a home health aide, and then the rest is history. Ah, uh, okay. You said leadership. Were you the mother superior? No, 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 no. I wasn't. <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't the top dog. Mm -hmm. I was just a pup. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and of course, the the, the the Franciscans of Assisi Heights are also the ones who have uh, the history with. With St. Mary's. St. Mary's, yes, yeah, right, right, yeah. yes. Yeah. Our, our mother, um, uh, Sister Alfred Mose, mm -hmm. uh, our, the woman who really started our community, mm -hmm. was there. It's a historic moment where uh, a tornado struck Rochester, and the sisters were there really uh, in an ongoing way with education. But mm -hmm. then when that happened, uh, the tide changed, and they became involved in health care, and then St. Mary's. Mother Alfred worked with Dr. Will and Charlie Mayo, 
And uh, they told her she was crazy mm. when she said, we'll build the hospital if you staff it. Well, it happened. It happened, yeah. yeah. Everything but we have, we have, um, we definitely have been in healthcare, but we've been in so many numerous yeah. ministries also yeah. Yeah. Uh, that we're very proud of. Yeah, and wonderful. When, when we think of Hospice House, Homestead Hospice House, that, you know, the location up on 26th Street is not the original place. Some people might not know oh, that. Oh, okay, yes. You know, you, mm -hmm, I mean, it mm -hmm, was, mm -hmm. the Hospice House was a part of the hospital, the old hospital That's right. on Cedar. Yes, yes. And um, the, the hospice program actually started close to 25, 27 years ago. Mm -hmm. And it was at, uh, it began at the hospital mm -hmm. with a very small number and within the Otana Steel County community. Mm -hmm. And now it has grown to, uh, yes, indeed, the hospice house mm -hmm. uh, is a very beautiful treasure of this community. It's a very, it's a gift. Yeah. Um, and we have room there for eight patients, mm -hmm. but we are also out in the community mm -hmm. hospice in five counties, wow. and we have close to 50 patients now uh, that, that we serve in their homes and in care centers, but mm -hmm. we're the only residence hospice in this area, mm -hmm. part of Alina. Right. So mm -hmm. the, 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 the program, if you will, is not necessarily a a four walls thing. It is obviously outside. Absolutely, into, yes, into yes, yes. Yeah. And it's an extraordinary ministry to be yeah, a part of, really right. is. And again, you've been, how long were you the chaplain? 21 years. 21 years. Mm -hmm. uh, what, what would be noteworthy in as you recollect your time? Oh my. Uh, I mean, I'm just a couple things. I know yeah. probably everything could be, but. What's mo most no noteworthy uh, are the extraordinary patients and families that we have the opportunity to get to know. When the phone call comes or we uh, a new patient is identified, they may be persons that we might know mm -hmm. well, sort of know, and not know at all. And every one of them is so precious. Mm -hmm. And they cut across uh, so many different uh, aspects of different cultures, different backgrounds, different education, different social strata, education or uh, economical strata. Mm -hmm. And uh, this walk home with them to God mm -hmm. is the same for everybody, really. You said it before, before we were on camera that you were in transition. Now that you're retired, you're in transition. It doesn't mean you're, you're done. But really, in a big way, the patients at hospice house are also transition. Yes, yes, absolutely. Things have happened which mm -hmm, changes mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. their life outlooks, whatever. Right. It's and, the journey we all make. Yeah. And to be, to walk with persons in that sacred, that sacred journey is very, very precious, mm -hmm. very mm -hmm. extraordinarily beautiful. And I work with the most incredible team mm -hmm. and staff of the professional staff and the volunteers and yeah. uh, so it's been a gift to me yeah. in so many ways. And, and I, I have to say, think that the gift has been returned. Oh, yeah, yeah. Really. thank you, let's, thank you. Let's, let's go back a few years and, and talk about some of your other things that you did. Now, you've you know, always been active, um, and I know you've been socially active, and you've been uh, politically, in a way, active as well. Can you just share a little something about your days of, hmm. of standing in front of a place called the School of the Americas. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, uh, our community, uh, we, we follow the, uh, the wonderful legacy of Francis of Assisi, mm -hmm. whose spirit was so like J Jesus. Mm -hmm. And uh, his whole life was given over to inclusion and accepting all mm -hmm. and peacemaking. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's always been a part of our ministry as Franciscans. And so when there are moments or times when it calls for probably going to the streets and saying this action is wrong because people are being hurt or maimed and there is violence involved. Uh, so one of the things that, that I became involved in was the School of the Americas and the protests that happened there annually. And um, I was there for 10, 10 successive years at the gates of that school. 
and uh, it's still there. That effort is still in process, mm -hmm. but uh, there are so many others also that yeah. we need. And that speaks to your whole sense of activism on behalf of people, mm -hmm. right? Right. I mean, who else do we have? Yeah, it's right? re it's about relationships, yeah, and is. yeah, and it's it's our relationship with God that, yeah. you know, we are relational right. people, and so. How can we not be involved? Yeah, right. How can we not? In, in the little time we have remaining, what's, what are you going to do now? Uh, well, I've talked to my manager, uh, Pat Beretta, mm -hmm. and I said, Pat, if I move from the position of chaplain, can I become a gopher? Mm -hmm. And so that's what's going to happen now. I will you. be a, a volunteer, and I will help coordinate some of the volunteers. So uh -huh. it's a... Uh, it's a wide open field. Yeah, yeah, you're not completely done, and, and, and I think we're all blessed to, to, uh, to know that. Yeah, good. Good to have you here. We're just uh, we're pleased to have you here, and best wishes thank in whatever you. you call retirement. Thank you. Okay? Thank you. Yeah, thank God you. bless you. Thank, God thank bless you. you too. Thank you. <laughs> we'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. Cedar Valley Services, located at the corner of Rose and Grove in Owatonna, provides an array of services for people with disabilities in Steele County. CVS thanks the entire community, especially our business customers, for supporting us in Owatonna for 43 years. Thank you from CVS. Well, welcome back to the Oatana Today Show, your community connection. Thanks so much for staying with us. We've got some community announcements to share with you right now. Uh, first, uh, kind of important, uh, a reminder that Daylight Savings Time begins this coming Sunday, March 12th. Remember to set your clocks ahead one hour before you go to bed on Saturday. Ahead is the key word on that one. Also, uh, the next evening support group for caregivers assisting with people, uh, people with Alzheimer's or another dementia uh, will be on Tuesday, March 7th from two, uh, 2017 from 6 to 7 p.m. The support group is held at Owatonna Public Library, Ganey Room, uh, the small, actually the small conference room adjacent to the Ganey Room uh, at the OPL. We will celebrate International Women's Day on Wednesday, March 8th from 5 to 6 p.m. at Owatonna Central Park. The 2017 national theme for this year's event is Be Bold for Change. The first Women's International Day was held in 1911. Local Girl Scouts will lead the Pledge of Allegiance, followed by speakers, former State Senator Ricky Jensen, and the Reverend Koki Konki from Owatonna will be there as well. All women and men are invited to attend. The event is sponsored by Steel County Indivisible, a grassroots group promoting human rights for all. And St. Paul's Episcopal Church on the corner of Mill, and, uh, Mill Street and Cedar Avenue has its Lenten speaker series, we, The Things We Treasure, on Wednesdays. 1210 to 1230. Uh, the speaker this Wednesday will be Jackie Osland. And lunch will be afterwards, if you choose, uh, for a small fee of $6. And all proceeds benefit the Steele County Free Clinic and the Crisis Resource Center. And that'll take care of it for today. Uh, please tune in on Wednesday when we'll hear about the Otana Restaurant Challenge and the History Center St. Patrick's Day event. I hope that you will join us then.